thanks, uh, Katika, and uh, let's move on to the next uh, uh, presentation. It's from Gayan. Uh, Kaviratna is uh, once again is a research assistant at Data Search, part time now. Previously, he was full time. Uh, he completed his uh, bachelor's degree in computer science and engineering from University of Mordor. Uh, his work uh, focuses on extracting mobility patterns from mobile network big data for predicting infectious disease uh, propagation. Uh, he's currently working at NACTA. Uh, Gan, yeah, hope you can take over. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, let's discuss uh, on the multidisciplinary research done by this involving telcos, healthcare, satellite images, and uh, it's about um, spatial temporal forecasting of them in using a network, network big data. Um, I'm Gayan Kaviratna, a former research assistant at DSS, and now working at NASA. And my uh, supervisor is Dr. Amal Sehandera, so this is a uh, related thing is not a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. um, through this presentation, I'll be discussing on the uh, problem and how uh, we use mobile network big data and not the heterogeneous data supposed to address that. Um, Dengue was uh, first found in Africa and since then, right, now it is uh, in the making whole tropical world. Um, if we continue, uh, if we come to Sri Lanka in 2017, we saw the worst outbreak with uh, 186,000 cases. Um, so, if we can strive for better spatial temporal forecasting, um, decision makers can um, better focus the resources, resulting less mobility and mortality due to dengue. Uh, so, um, let's uh, see how we are going to do that. Dengue is uh, vector borne, and uh, the main vector is mosquito. It is E diphtai. Um, the main vector can only fly from 100 meters to 1 kilometer. So, there should be a faster carrier to rapidly uh, take the disease from one area to another. Um, well, that's us humans. The mosquito gets the virus from an infected human and spread it in the area. Uh, so, if we can find human mobility, uh, mobility patterns, that will help us to uh, predict the outbreaks. But um, unfortunately, in Sri Lanka, we don't have much resources to track human movement. Um, that's where uh, mobile network big data comes to play. Um, so this is what we envision uh, to acquire in the end, uh, connecting all these heterogeneous layers and uh, finally provided accurate and spatial temporal forecasting uh, with um, sufficient time window uh, to the people in need. First, uh, let's see where the literature points us. Um, there is many, many researches conducted on predicting dengue outbreaks. Um, those are mainly focused on um, climate uh, and socioeconomic factors like temperature, rainfall, population, uh, forest coverage, uh, which we also consider. But um, there has been limited amount of research, research on um, human mobility. Um, so, uh, this is uh, one um, research done by uh, Pakistan uh, on the relationship between mobility and the dengue uh, outbreaks. And uh, also there has been uh, proved the relationship by one of our uh, colleagues and their research. So um, let's see um, how we are going to use uh, code, code detail record, the so-called uh, mobile network with data to achieve our goal. Uh, this is how a call detail record looks like. Uh, from this onwards, I call it uh, as CDR. Uh, though there are other fields, we are only um, interested in uh, call a cell ID, the cell tower connected at the point of call, uh, the call time, and call duration. 
So um, let's see um, the next big question on your mind would be, um, how do we get CDR? Is it freely available? No. Telcos are very reluctant to share this, uh, even uh, for a noble cause like ours, due to privacy concerns. Um, so they uh, give us uh, CO2 minimized data. Um, as <laughs> concerned scientists, we are not interested in storing even the CO2 minimized data, as there could still be leaks by analyzing patterns. Uh, so we first create profiles for the cell towers and uh, time windows then generate um, synthetic CDRs to match those profiles, including a random noise. Um, as we are not interested on the exact location or the exact time, that is not going to hurt us much. Um, let's see um, how we get the mobility information. Uh, people spend most of their time at either home or work locations. So the, higher, the highest risk of getting infected is at one of those places. So we are considering the mobility between work and home location. Um, so now um, we have to um, identify the home and work location. When we plot um, the uh, mobility against hours of the day, we got two valleys, uh, which should uh, correspond to uh, the uh, time people spend at the work and home location. So um, we first aggregated um, so, um, so we first tag the CDRs on those periods as either uh, work go home, then get the unique records for each subscriber in a certain um, cell per day and pick the maximum occurred cell in the uh, concert time window. Then we choose the home um, or work location as per the tag. So you can read more about uh, this uh, the research done by local and then uh, Learn Asia. Um, so uh, this is uh, the risk-based mobility model which was suggested by a colleague of our data set. As per the model, a risk is assigned to each CDR correspondent to a mobility between uh, mobility uh, between the home and work locations. Uh, based on the time, home, uh, or work location. Then aggregate the risk uh, scores um, into cell level uh, to get the um, total risk in a cell. We have two indicators, um, direct risk and the percentage risk, which uh, made by multiplying uh, by the time spent at the location. Uh, we take the time spent at location uh, as proportional to the number of calls made in that day in the cell. Um, so while that uh, model was good at picking the um, active contribution from uh, mobility, um, it loses information on passive contribution. In um, active contribution, uh, when a person moves uh, through a risk area, a risk gets adjusted. Uh, in passive um, contributions, come to picture uh, when people gather from uh, different uh, areas. Uh, to uh, one area and then move back uh, to their home location. So, um, uh, the, uh, these algorithms might look simpler. Uh, so, let's uh, take a look at our big data set. Uh, so, these synthetic records are generated from uh, nearly uh, 10 million. Um, SIM cards, which contains around 1.5 million uh, of voice calls and DTR records, spanning from a period more than one year. Obviously, uh, we are not going to be able to run um, much complex queries uh, on such a huge data set. Um, that's why the benefit of a clustered Spark environment comes into the picture. Um, so this Spark will um, map the query into smaller jobs and then reduce the results into one. So um, this is how our data set cluster looks like, uh, which runs all the heavy queries equipped with a master node and eight clients. We have Hadoop distributing the input files between the nodes and Spark uh, distributing the queries, running them on the distributed files and collecting the results. Um, so when we run the home and work identification query, uh, we aggregated them into cell level for validation with actual population on those cells it actually follows the pattern of uh, population density of those cells. Um, so um, 
it took uh, around uh, 187 minutes uh, to run this on the GPU cluster. Uh, so uh, we have uh, discussed about uh, how we are uh, going to generate the mobility information. So uh, let's uh, look into how we are going to uh, combine these heterogeneous data sources. So one of the most important data sources in our research is satellite images. Um, we use the vegetation index and um, it can be used as a measurement for forest coverage. Um, we use the NDVI, uh, uh, which is known as normalized different vegetation index, derived based on the equation here. Um, here are um, and here are some of the problems that we um, face while uh, processing these images. Um, so um, these sat images are huge; uh, they hardly fit it with uh, most areas. So we have to create a mosaic and clip through. In uh, one rotation, uh, the satellite is unlikely to uh, capture all our interested area, and the size of these tiles are varying over time um, and location. So, also, there are things like remote areas having uh, multiple polygons, and um, some of the polygons are included in another polygon. So, one of the remote areas is included in another remote area. Um, so um, once we get these uh, mosaics built, uh, so here we used uh, Google Earth Engine for that. Uh, we all have mosaics from different um, iterations and pick the uh, greenest pixel. Um, and uh, we uh, run the NDVI equation on top of that. So th that's how we actually resolve the problem of uh, cloud coverage and this is um, how the overall result looked like. Um, so uh, likewise, uh, we include uh, the population, temperature and time lag cases with uh, mobility information in our model. So uh, this, there are some of the links uh, to the code and the projects uh, of the research. Thank you. Okay, uh, any questions? Thanks, Dan. Uh, since uh, we are running out of time, I'll uh, move on to the next presentation. But if you have any questions, uh, please, uh, we'll, uh, we will. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask on the Q and A. And also, I would like to remind you about the uh, workshop that we are having uh, tomorrow on uh, deep uh, learning. Uh, we will start at two o'clock, and uh, have you, if you have registered, you will definitely be able to. Uh, Join in, and still, I think we can uh, register if you are not registered. Not registered. Right. So the next uh, presentation is uh, from uh, Sudipa.